we've talked about equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle and how when you make a change to a reaction that is at equilibrium, the reaction fights back. It's going to shift the, the concentrations to the right or to the left, to the products or to the reactants in order to un try to undo the change that you did. So now we're going to look at the effect of temperature change on an equilibrium. In an exothermic reaction, we can think of heat as being a product because in an exothermic reaction, heat is given off. And so it, it's helpful to actually draw that. So an exothermic reaction might be A plus B yields C plus heat. Okay? It is producing heat. Heat is given off. So raising the temperature of an exothermic reaction is like adding heat, right? So if we increase the heat, if we add heat, what's that going to do to the equilibrium? I should have made this an equilibrium. It's going to push it to the other side, right? Because if you add heat energy, it's going to shift to the other side and try to undo what you did. So raising the temperature on an exothermic reaction will cause it to shift to the reactants, to the left. In an endothermic reaction, we can think of heat as being a reactant. You have to add heat to this to get it to go. You put heat in, right? You put something in, you put the reactants in, and they, they react. So A plus B plus heat forms C, and this is an equilibrium. So now, if we raise the temperature, if we add heat... That's going to shift the equilibrium which way? To the right. Because we increase the heat on the reactants, and it will try to get rid of that. And so it will shift to the other side. Does that make sense? Now, if, if this is not exothermic or endothermic, then changing the temperature is not going to affect anything. And there are some reactions that really just don't have an energy component. So here's a specific example. Um, nitrogen plus hydrogen forms ammonia and gives off heat. This is an exothermic reaction. So if we add heat, the reaction shifts to the left. If we remove heat, if we cool it down, the reaction will shift to the right. And in industry, where they're doing these chemical reactions as part of their business... Maybe, um, you know, they're, they're actually manufacturing chemicals, but other processes too, electroplating bumpers or doing all sorts of things involve chemical reactions. And understanding what affects the equilibrium can allow you to tweak the conditions and make the reaction do more of what you want it to do. So in this instance, if you have, if you're making ammonia and you, you want more of the product and less of the reactants. So you're not going to operate this reaction under high temperature conditions because that will favor the reactants. You're going to cool the reaction mixture, maybe even refrigerate it. Cool it down because as you suck heat out, the reaction shifts to the right and you get more product formed. Endothermic reaction is the opposite. Here, heat is a reactant. If we increase the temperature by adding heat, it shifts to the right. If we remove heat and cool it down, the reaction shifts to the left. I think we have a picture of this one. Yeah, this is cool. So this, this is a cool demonstration. Unfortunately, you know, I don't have one of these tubes, but we can look at the pictures. So here's a sealed glass tube, and it contains dinitrogen tetroxide gas. When we put this in a warm situation, heat is one of the reactants. This is an endothermic reaction. Adding heat causes the reaction to shift to the right, and we see more of the product, and so we see a brown gas here. The N2O4 is colorless. If we take that same tube, still sealed up, and we put it in some dry ice and cool it down, the color goes away. 
we can visually see the shift in the equilibrium. And you could take that tube back and forth, back and forth, warm and cold, all day long, and it would just keep doing that. That is kind of cool, isn't it? Somebody's got to think that's neat. So you bring it over here, the color goes away. Why? Because you've made it cold. You've removed heat. When you remove the heat, the equilibrium is going to shift and try to replace that. And so it will shift to the left. <coughs> Wait a minute. Pause. When we remove the heat, it shifts to the left, and we get the colorless gas. When we heat that up again, adding heat will cause the reaction to shift to the right. So here's a summary. In an exothermic reaction, remember that heat is a product. So if we add product, if we increase the temperature, the reaction shifts to the left. If we decrease the temperature, removing product, it shifts to the right. Endothermic reaction is exactly the opposite. <coughs> heat is a reactant. And so if you just think of heat, the energy for an exothermic or endothermic reaction as being either the reactant or the product appropriately, we can apply that same logic of adding to the one side will cause it to shift to the other. Removing from one side will cause it to shift to that side. So here's an example. This reaction is exothermic. Okay, we're being told that. Um, it's actually flat out saying it's exothermic. Another way they might say it is, you know, delta H of reaction equals some positive number. Right? That means that heat, I'm sorry, negative number, some negative number. Because heat is being released, it's being given off, it's being lost from the reaction. So the heat of reaction is negative. Then they're asking, what's the effect of increasing the temperature? If we increase the temperature, because in an exothermic reaction, we've got heat as a product, right? So yes, if we add heat, it will shift to the left. And what if we decrease the temperature? It'll shift to the right. Any questions? <laughs>